I don't know how to like hold my hand. Three people. No, don't, I don't want that in. Anyway. Hello everyone, right away I wanna thank you for coming back to my channel for another video. Today we are once again talking about something that is near and dear to my heart and that's how to make yourself into a better version of you. The exercise I'm going to be discussing today is one that I think has positively impacted my life and I mean that seriously. So hopefully I can convince you of its value because I really believe that engaging with the question I'm going to ask can make a, a positive difference in your life and that's my goal. Which brings me to my next point. Right away I'll ask the question that I know the algorithm is dying for me to get to which is why do I think this video is worth your time? So here's why. I want to help you actualize your full potential and achieve your goals. I've designed this video to that end. I think that the question I'm going to ask can help us better conceptualize the path that we're on and as a consequence, you know, at least ideally, or maybe in theory, I think we can put ourselves in a better position to actualize our full potential. So that's what I'm focusing on. That's what I'm trying to do for the duration of the video, you know, how to help you make yourself a little bit better. And before we go further, I'll say two quick things. The first, the contents of this video are taken from a lecture I gave at Johns Hopkins in the fall of 2020 for the course I'm teaching titled Meanings to Being Using Reading and Writing as Tools to Author the Self. Um, and this is the third weekly writing assignment. The second point is if you enjoy this video, if you find it interesting or useful or helpful, I ask that you please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Okay, first things first. This week I asked my students to think about three people who they admired and identify as many specific admirable qualities as they could about those people. But I didn't just ask them to think about these qualities, I asked them to write about these qualities. And maybe, you know, you don't like writing, I think that's fair, but I'm hoping you'll give this exercise a chance because I think it can offer you a little bit of, you know, good, let's say, throughout your day. It offers you an opportunity to improve during your day in a way that's easy and, you know, free. I teach writing classes at Johns Hopkins University. I love writing. I want to communicate my love of writing to you because I think it can be helpful. So here goes. Writing, as I've come to understand it, is a more sophisticated form of thinking. Writing is like thinking 2.0 because we're not just thinking when we write, we're giving form to our thoughts. And in that way, the, the, the act of thinking becomes something that's more sophisticated. So why is that important? It's important because it's a way of conceptualizing the, the objective value of writing. Virtually any time you write, you're improving yourself in some way because you're developing your ability to clearly articulate your thoughts. And I designed this week's writing assignment to add as significant an opportunity for the improvement of your ability to articulate yourself as possible. And I also tailored the contents to help you. So, I mean, that's really my pitch for the exercise. I hope you'll give your time to it, but now I'll say a bit more. Okay, so I asked you to write about some of the positive qualities that come to mind when you think about three people that you admire. Why do I think this can help you? I think it can help you because, again, not only are you practicing articulating your ideas, but you're making conscious the traits that you look up to in other people. And I think that's something that is worth doing. It's something that's useful to know because it puts you in direct communication with what, let's say, principles or ideas influence the way in which you interact with the present. And that's important because like I've said before, I want you to actualize your full potential and achieve your goals. By identifying some of the qualities you admire in other people, you're putting yourself in direct connection with the sorts of behaviors that can play a big role in the long run. So that's how I asked my students to think about this week's writing exercise and it's how I hope you'll think about it as well. So again, identify three people that you admire. They can be people you know or people you don't know. I've had students consider family members and friends and coaches and athletes uh, and professors and public figures, celebrities, anybody. I'm not going to tell you who you should or shouldn't admire. I just want you to pick three people that stand out, pick the first three people that come to mind and run with it. And once you've identified the three people you choose to write about, I recommend making a list of the qualities you admire. This doesn't have to be a crazy long list. It can be quick. I think that that's the beauty of these assigned exercises. They don't have to take more than 20 minutes if you don't want them to. And I think the reality is everybody has 20 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes that they can kind of like set aside. So then spend a minute scribbling down as many qualities as come to mind. Then read through the list and identify one to three qualities about that person you admire. Take out maybe 
the three most admirable qualities from the list that you laid out before yourself and write for five minutes or so. Don't worry about grammatical errors, just focus on getting the words out. And then repeat this process for the other two people who came to mind when you were considering those that you most admire. And then once you've completed this exercise, just put it down. You can return to it in a day or a week or a month, whenever really. When you do eventually return to it, which I really hope you do because again, I've designed the exercise to help you. Here's what I think is most important. Just reread what you wrote, that's it. The stakes aren't super high. When you reread a piece of your writing, what you're actually doing is combing through the thoughts that you previously put down and you're just kind of combing through them with a newfound perspective, meaning you're just doing it a second time. You're working through the idea a second time. You're going the extra distance to, let's say, internalize what it was that you put down in the first place. And that's important because it can help you optimize the time you spend completing the writing exercise. It allows you the opportunity to kind of get the most out of the time that you put into it. Because you're not just getting the thoughts out of your head and you know that's the end of it. You're getting the thoughts out of your head, you're writing them down, but you know after some time you revisit the idea and you can rework through the idea. So let's say you spend 20 minutes writing. You complete the exercise and it takes you like, I don't know, 10 minutes to reread it. It might not seem like a lot, but at the end of the day, it's time that you've given to something that's supposed to help you improve the probability that you can effectively and positively negotiate with the future that's lying ahead of you. And that's what I think is really important because again, you're making what was previously unconscious or maybe a little bit blurry or unknown, you're making it known, you're making it conscious or at least a little more conscious. And I think the real world benefit of identifying the qualities in other people that we admire is that we put ourselves in a better position to implement what is admirable in other people in our own life. And if you do this exercise correctly, which is to say, you know, truthfully and honestly, the qualities you identify and critically engage with are going to be positive qualities that can offer you tiny incremental improvements that will compound in the long run. By writing about the traits we admire in other people, I think we can learn to become better people, or we at least put ourselves in a better position to absorb those qualities and to grow into better people. And that's what I want for you. I want you to achieve your goals and actualize your full potential. And I think spending time articulating the things you admire in other people, I really believe can train your subconscious to more consistently act in accordance with the qualities you deem most praiseworthy. Okay, that's everything I've got. But before I go, I wanna thank you, my wonderful viewer, for sticking with me to the end. If you found this video interesting or helpful or useful, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.